My wife cheated on me with her gynecologist. Then she brushed it off saying it was a fertility treatment. So I gave her what she deserved. Hello everyone, I'm 35 male, and I was married to my ex-wife, Emily 30 female. For four years before our relationship soured, Emily and I first met at a bar where she worked as a bartender. My friends and I frequently visited the bar, and right from the first day I ever saw Emily, I knew I liked her. She had some unmissable charm that stood her apart from her colleagues. For weeks, I continued to go to the bar without saying anything to Emily or telling her how I felt about her. One evening, while we were at the bar, Emily was serving at a table next to us when a man made some uncomfortable gestures towards her, leaving her embarrassed. I stood up for her and asked the man to apologize to Emily. Few others who noticed it joined me in schooling that man. Soon the security officials of the bar intervened and dragged that man out of the bar. Later that evening, Emily and her boss came to our table with a complimentary drink to thank us. I continued to visit that bar and we soon became friends. From being bar friends, I asked her out on a date and she agreed. Emily and I ended up dating for one year before we married. A few months before our marriage, I got Emily a better job. This way she would no longer have to go to the bar. I did this because even while we dated, I still went to the bar with her, and I hated seeing how she was treated by other men there. I wasn't comfortable with the men glaring at her and checking her out. So with some friend's help, I got her a job as a waitress in a fancy restaurant. Emily could not get a good-paying job because of her educational qualifications. She had completed high school and tried community college for a year, but she couldn't continue because she couldn't afford to sponsor herself, so she had to take a break and work. On my end, I worked as an assistant lecturer at the university where I was doing my master's. Because I loved Emily so much, her educational background did not matter to me. I had even secretly put money aside for her college and planned to tell her when the money was enough. Apart from Emily not attending college, she was street smart, hardworking, and open-minded. She was always ready to try out something that would bring her new results, and she was always eager to learn. Her open mind and eagerness to learn something new were her attributes I loved most about her. But during the first two years of her marriage, we were happy and immensely enjoyed each other's company. But there was something that bothered me from time to time. At the beginning of her marriage, I wasn't concerned about it, but after three years and Emily could not conceive, I became very bothered. While we were dating, Emily and I talked about the number of children we wanted and even had their names in advance. We both agreed on having two kids and it didn't matter if it was two boys, two girls, or a boy and a girl. What mattered to most was that we'd had the first one in the first or second year of our marriage and we'd have the second child some years after the first child. It was a perfect plan and I looked forward to it. I wanted a situation where my first child would be at least 14 years old when I turned 50 and the second child would either be 10 or 8. But I was worried when the first two years of our marriage passed and we were slowly progressing to the end of the third year without Emily conceiving. Emily knew I loved children and was aligned with the plan, but sometimes she gave me mixed signals about having a baby. We ran a series of tests, took medication, and did fertility tests. All the tests confirmed that we were both fine, but I still didn't understand why Emily could not conceive. I couldn't even trust the test results from only one hospital. So we did the test at different hospitals and the results were all the same. When we eventually clocked three years together and didn't have a child, this began weighing me down. I had been disappointed so many times in other areas of my life and I didn't think I'd also be disappointed in the area of having children. By the third year of our marriage, the bond between Emily and I was slowly fading. We no longer spent time together like we used to and many things changed between us. Those times we couldn't even have a long conversation without me mentioning the things we would do together once we had a child. And this was a big turnoff for Emily. She started complaining that I was more concerned about the future than living in the present. Shortly after we celebrated our third anniversary, I realized how distant we had become. I promised Emily that we would return to the couple we used to be and I would no longer worry about children. I didn't want to miss the opportunity of growing with Emily. She was happy and explained that God gave children and whenever our time comes, He would bless us with children. I knew she was right. As Christians, we both believe that God was the one who gave all the good things to men, 
including the children, and whenever it was time, he would bless us with kids. I also repeatedly told myself that not having kids did not mean Emily and I were not complete. And with this new consciousness and mentality, I stopped worrying about kids. I started looking for new ways to spice up my marriage and enjoy a life with Emily. It didn't matter to me anymore if we had kids in the future or we didn't. I even nursed the idea of adopting a child later if Emily could not conceive. Meanwhile, by the third year of our marriage, Emily was already in college for a four-year program. She was in her first year and I was sponsoring her with the money I had put aside. She was doing well and I was glad she could finally go to college like she had always wanted. As time passed, our marriage slowly returned to how it used to be. The only difference was that Emily and I were not as close as we used to be because we were both very busy. If she wasn't studying late at night, she'd come home late from work and I was equally busy. I sat down. I knew a time would come when we'd be busy and it didn't make a fuss about it. I tried my best to be a supportive husband. If I returned home early, I would make dinner for us, take out the trash, clean the house, and do other things to relieve her stress. On weekends, I would let her rest and I'd clean the house, shop for groceries or do the laundry and cook. Then in the evenings, we'd go out to have fun or drive her on the city. A few months after I stopped talking about kids or mentioning them in her conversations, I noticed that Emily was still. Went to appointments with her gynecologist. She visited him at least once a week, which was even more than she did before. I wanted to ask her about it, but I knew why she was visiting her gynecologist and it would be stupid and insensitive of me to ask her, so I didn't ask. I believed that she wanted to do things at her own pace and if she was still visiting her gynecologist, there was nothing wrong with that. In fact, I was impressed that she didn't stop seeing him just because we stopped talking about kids. This enhanced our intimacy. In our early days of marriage, we used to do it twice or three times a week. After our repeated attempts of conceiving failed, we would go a whole week without doing it. But after Emily became more serious with her gynecologist, she'd make us do it at least once or twice a week, and they were mainly on the days she returned from her appointments. Whenever she did this, I was always happy because I believed her gynecologist advised her to come to me, or maybe there was something she was trying to test out. For once, I never questioned her. I was available for her whenever she wanted it. Aside from me thinking that Emily wanted to have babies, the increase in her intimacy helped bond us more, and her relationship improved. For months, things continued like this. Also, the more we got intimate, the more my hopes for having a child increased, although I never mentioned it to her. I was hoping one day she would come with excitement and tell me she was pregnant, but then never happened. I'm also glad it never happened. If I had not discovered the truth just at the right time, I would be raising another man's child now. Throughout the months Emily had been visiting her gynecologist, I never knew she was cheating on me and having an affair with the same gynecologist I respected. He was in his late forties, and I was even thinking of paying him a visit to thank him for consistently standing by Emily. He was referred by one of her aunts who could not conceive for years. Both the gynecologists helped she finally conceived and bore a child. Two weeks ago, I discovered something fishy. I was in the bedroom, struggling to sleep that evening. That day, I was so exhausted from work all day, I couldn't even make dinner or do what I usually did. So I went straight to our bedroom, took off my clothes and shoes, and jumped in bed. Before Emily returned home, I had fallen asleep. But the sound of her car as she drove into the driveway woke me up. I was utterly awake because I'm a very light sleeper, but my eyes were still shut when Emily entered the room. I'm guessing she thought I was asleep, so she continued muttering on her call. And while hanging up she said, I love you. See you tomorrow after work. I froze in bed and wondered who she was talking to. I knew it wasn't any of her siblings or parents because Emily did not express her emotions like that. I remained in bed while she went to make some dinner. And approximately 35 minutes later, I came out of the room and pretended as if I had just woken up. I knew Emily was smart, so I had to stay that long in the room so she wouldn't think or suspect I heard her conversation. I intended to wait for her to fall asleep and then access her phone to see who she was talking to. Honestly, I didn't care if she was talking to her best friend or another female. I wanted to be sure she was not cheating on me or doing anything behind my back. Later that night, after Emily slept and snored, I accessed her phone. 
The last number she called was her gynecologist. I did not want to believe it when I saw it, so I went through her text messages and WhatsApp chat. She was not a social media person, and aside from LinkedIn, she was building a professional brand. The only social media app she had was WhatsApp. As I went through her WhatsApp, I noticed she chatted more with her gynecologist than she chatted with me. In fact, we barely chatted at all. Our WhatsApp conversation was filled with different grocery lists. We used it to list the items we needed at home, so either of us could stop and shop for them on our way back home. I went through their chat from the beginning to see the timeline of their relationship. I even went to the living room to reread the messages. I still cannot believe that Emily had been cheating on me for almost seven months. I didn't even know what to do or say. I was so angry at Emily for ruining everything we had worked for. She wasn't even afraid I could stop her college sponsorship because of her infidelity. When I was done crying and washing my swollen red eyes, I took screenshots of their conversation from when they started dating and sent them to my phone. Then I cleared every trace that I touched her phone. I spent the rest of the night reading countless stories from the Reddit community who had encountered similar situations. The following morning when she woke up, she asked me why my eyes were so swollen. I told her I was watching a very emotional movie all night and ended up crying. She just laughed at me and didn't say anything else. She didn't know I knew and I didn't act like anything else was off. Even with all I had seen on her phone, I still wanted to see with my eyes that Emily was cheating on me with her gynecologist. So that evening, I left work early, drove to the fancy restaurant she worked at, and parked two houses away from the restaurant. I knew she didn't have classes that day because she told me before she left the house in the morning. Around 7 p.m., Emily finished her shift, and I watched as she got out of the restaurant and entered her car. She drove off immediately and I tailed her to the hospital. I waited for her to park in the hospital's parking lot and go into the hospital. Once she was in, I parked too and waited for some minutes before I entered the hospital. It turned out that she had an appointment booked with her gynecologist. I had to tell the receptionist that I was Emily's husband. I lied that she had left her phone in the car and wanted to give it to her before leaving. It was the only intelligent and believable lie I could come up with, so the reception instructed me to the gynecologist's office and in no time, I was on the floor. I knew what was going on between Emily and her gynecologist and I knew our marriage would never remain the same after that day. So before I boldly burst them, I turned on my phone's video recorder and without making a sound or knocking, I opened the door and walked in. As I had expected, Emily was lying on those long chairs that had been adjusted down and she and her gynecologist were doing it during hospital hours. I ensured to record it so that she or the judge didn't dismiss my case, saying that it was an examination or something because a gynecologist does access private parts. Immediately I opened the door and Emily saw that I was the one. Her face turned pale and she pushed the gynecologist away. The gynecologist was scared and confused at the same time and when Emily told him I was her husband, he froze. I didn't make a scene or yell. I stood by the entrance of his office, recorded the video and walked out. The reaction confirmed that there wasn't any examination going on but a foul business. Emily ran after me half naked. When I got into the elevator, taking me to the ground floor, she stood there and begged me to listen to her. Her voice was so loud and people were already coming out of their rooms and offices to see what was happening. I had to fake a smile with the secretary on my way out and I drove home. When I got home, I texted her and told her not to bother coming home and that was it. I changed the locks of my house. For two weeks, Emily has not come home but she has been blowing my phone with calls and messages. I did that because I wanted to clear my head. Apart from posting this here, I haven't told anyone about her cheating yet and is eating me up from the inside. I have decided that. I do not want our marriage again but before we divorce, I want to punish her and let her feel the pain she put me through. I'm so confused right now and I don't know what to do. My suggestions would be appreciated. Update 1 Hello everyone. Thank you for your comments and for your suggestions. I'm still shocked that Emily could do this to me after everything I did for her. Emily was always my priority and I put her needs before mine. I should have taken so many expensive courses to help improve myself but I didn't take them because I wanted Emily to attend college. I push all my savings to sponsor her. I'm still deeply hurt and I don't think I'll ever get over the pain she has caused me. So, 
Someone here commented that I'd play with her a bit and make her publicly humiliate herself before I serve her to the divorce papers. I think it's the best thing to do and I have also decided to withdraw all my support from her education. If she wants, she can continue college with her peanut earnings. It's not my business anymore. Three days ago, I took Emily's call after weeks of not talking to her. When I did, she started crying on the phone and pleaded with me to at least let her come home so that we could talk. I knew she would ask for this so I told her to come over. She came over 15 minutes after we ended the call and I let her in. I didn't want it to look like I was pretending so I expressed my feelings and disappointment calmly and she went to her knees and apologized to me. She said that she didn't know what came over her and that it would never happen again. She even promised to stop seeing any gynecologist alone if I gave her a second chance. She said that the gynecologist had manipulated her into all these things by saying that I was impotent and she had to take his help to get pregnant. I questioned her why she didn't discuss this with me when the gynecologist first planted this idea into her mind. She said the doctor had told her not to tell me because it would hurt my male ego. A part of me wanted to believe her, but I also knew that she was not that naive to fall for such a trap. I'll admit that I cried again that day. Seeing her brought back the pain I had that day when I caught her in the act. After she begged for forgiveness, I told her I would only forgive her and take her back if she confessed her cheating to both our parents and how I caught her. When she heard that, she paused, looked at me for a while, then started crying again. She asked if there was no other way and I told her that it had to be the only way. I thought she would say no, but she didn't. She said she would do anything to restore the relationship. We have picked a date to go to her parents' house and my parents' house for dinner. After that, we'll gather all of her important friends and she will tell them herself how much of a horrible wife she has been. This is the best way to punish her for what she did to me. I will make another update soon and I cannot wait to see the expression on her face when I serve her the divorce papers. I have already contacted a lawyer and he is currently processing them. Update 2. Hello everyone. I'd love to announce that Emily did everything we agreed on. But before I tell you how it happened, Emily and I are officially divorced. Yep, I followed the plan and she got what she deserved. So regarding Emily openly confessing to everyone, we first went to her parents' house for dinner. They were so happy to receive us, but could also sense that something was wrong with Emily. No kidding. She looked miserable and anyone who saw her could easily tell all was not well. While we were in the middle of the dinner, Emily announced to her parents and siblings who were at home that she wanted to tell them something and everyone got alert. Suddenly, she started crying and in a teary voice, she told her parents that she was cheating on me with her gynecologist and I caught her. Her parents and siblings were shocked when she said that and they nearly choked. They all turned in my direction, but I kept a straight face and continued to eat. Her father was the only one who started yelling at her and the rest of the family could not utter a word. The more her father yelled at her, the more she cried and after I was done eating, we left together. No one said anything. It was so awkward. I'm sure her parents were shocked to see that both of us come and leave together. The next day, we went to my parents' house and Emily told them the same thing. My parents could not believe it. They knew Emily to be calm and reserved, and she did not look like someone who would do such a thing. They were so disappointed, but they left the decision to me. After we met both of our parents, I was satisfied with the results. I knew her parents were disappointed in her. The looks on their faces and expressions said so. While returning from my house, I dropped her at the motel where she was staying after I discovered her cheating. She expected me to take her home as she had done whatever she was told. I asked her to come home the next morning. When she came to the house and the next day, to see her stuff neatly packed on the front porch, she was shocked because she expected us to restart our life. Poor thing. When she came in, I handed her the divorce papers. She started crying. I told her it was over between us and that I only wanted to teach her a lesson. At that moment, she flipped and started yelling at me for ruining her life. She even said she was doing me a favor by sleeping with her gynecologist because she knew I was impotent. Could not make babies. The joke was on her because I was not impotent. Despite her, I asked her why she had not conceived yet since she was so fertile and that got to her. She was so pissed and she started throwing things at me. I angrily kicked her out of my house and we officially divorced a week later. 
As for the gynecologist that slept with Emily, I sent the screenshots and video I recorded to the hospital authority. I even posted this on social media mentioning the doctor in the hospital's name. It didn't go well for the hospital administration. He was suspended for doing a patient during the hospital hours. Emily could not even return to him because his marriage and career were ruined because of her. I now feel fulfilled and I can't thank you all enough for your suggestions.